A Fox News alert chaos unfolding right now. Kabul's airport, where at least three are killed, some say more, has thousands, as you see, and I'm seeing this for the first time, are there to evacuate Afghanistan. They're dying to get on the one plane that comes in uh, when it does come. But while the Taliban takes over Kabul and the country, President Biden is facing scrutiny for a silent weekend at Camp David. The AP says they are all stunned. Well, too bad. You're the president, and you got us into this mess. Our next guest slamming the president, quote, uh, it's ill-planned retreat and calls on Biden to destroy every Taliban fighter near Kabul. Arkansas GOP Senator Tom Cotton served in Afghanistan and joins us now. Uh, Senator, we got about five to 8,000 now. We know we could destroy these guys. We let them come into the Capitol. The president, the gutless guy he is, who is as corrupt as the day is long, he fled for the hills. Nobody in re as a replacement. So why did we do nothing? Yeah, Brian, the scenes from Kabul and Afghanistan more broadly are tragic and they're catastrophic for America. You know, Joe Biden announced about four months ago that we would withdraw from Afghanistan. But there's a difference between the decision to withdraw and how that decision was executed. Whatever you think of the first decision, the execution of Joe Biden has been recklessly negligent. Yes, yesterday I heard from an Arkansan who was stuck behind Taliban checkpoints in Kabul. Uh, the best advice he was getting was to shelter in place and try to go fill out an electronic form on the State Department website. So we up and opened up our phone lines and email to any Americans that were stuck behind Taliban lines in the last 12 to 18 hours, we've had four to 500 people contacting us, pleading for assistance for how to get to the airport and get out of the United and get out of Afghanistan. And remember, these are not just Afghan civilians who helped us. These are American citizens holding American passports who for four months did not receive guidance about what to do. And now the country is overtaken by an outlaw criminal gang like the Taliban threatening the lives of hundreds, if not thousands, of Americans to say nothing of the strategic consequences of this debacle for the years to come for America and the world. Right. And just keep in mind, this came, this is where the attack on 9-11 came from. We're coming up on 20 years now. I don't know how President Biden even shows his face at an event there. And the Taliban leader has already made speeches. We can't get our president to make a speech. But the Taliban went to the palace, maybe gave a little speech with his favorite henchman around him with his nice rifle next to him. And the Taliban leader claims he spent eight years in Gitmo in the victory speech. Now he sits in the Kabul palace. Man, this was all self-inflicted. We let him out, probably never should. Negotiated with the, the Taliban five from there, we never should, and then we turned it. Then we walked away, and we were their colonels and captains. They had no leaders because the Americans were their leadership. They would fight, but when their leaders left, you know what happens. But then you would. You're a military guy. They had no leadership. Yeah, Brian, we we've, we've let people out from Gitmo for 20 years. We should have had. Uh, uh, military trials for them and summarily executed most of them as war criminals. And now they're back on the battlefield. Thousands of Taliban and Al Qaeda prisoners from across Afghanistan have been released from prisons in the last few days, once again back on the battlefield. And as you said, Afghanistan is the place from which the 9 11 attacks were planned and launched. Ever since Joe Biden announced in the spring that we would withdraw from Afghanistan, I've asked for answers about how we plan to protect ourselves. That's our core interest in Afghanistan, is not allowing a group like Al Qaeda or ISIS right. to gain uh, a safe haven to once again attack the United States. We've never had an answer. And you see the consequences of the terrible, ill planned, disorganized withdrawal right. that Joe Biden is responsible for. Now he won't even appear on camera to explain the circumstances and what's next to the American people. So, what do you say to people like you, like the President Trump, who said, I'm against this endless war, I want everybody out of there? Um, are they, are you guys, do you guys have a leg to stand on to be critical of President Biden? Well, Brian, as I said, there's a difference between the decision to withdraw and how this decision was executed. The last three presidents have all wanted to get out of Afghanistan. I understand the sentiment, but the consequences of that withdrawal are now being played out on TV. The ill-planned and disorganized, chaotic withdrawal that Joe Biden oversaw is going to be catastrophic for America for years to come. Look, he announced this decision at the height of the fighting season. He wanted it 
all troops out by September 11th, a politically symbolic date to be sure, but a tactically dangerous one. That is when the Taliban traditionally is reaching peak fighting season. All he had to do perhaps was wait a few more months to get into the winter months and we would have had a much more orderly transition. You would have had time to get all these American citizens out of Afghanistan. As it is now, we have Americans who are stuck behind enemy lines in Afghanistan with no clear way to get out of the country. You said Afghanistan, not Kabul. Kabul, they have some hope. Are we going to be sending our choppers into Afghanistan, into Jalalabad and uh, Kandahar, where some of our people, allies and Americans, might need some help? Are we going to go into harm's way? And then what if the Taliban shoot at our, our you know, their shoulder-fired missiles, take aim at one of the Chinook helicopters? What do we do then? Are we back in a war that Joe Biden didn't like anymore? Un so many questions. It's unfolding in, in in real time right now, and I don't know how it ends, but I hate the way, I hate the way uh, what we're experiencing now, Senator. And also, there's a story here. The president disarmed, the president of Afghanistan disarmed the Northern Alliance over the last few years. Why would he do that? Legitimate fighters disarmed that would have been able to fight off the Taliban. Yeah, it, we have to look into that. Yeah, Brian, we do. Right. Um, the situation is so much worse now than it was in 2001. The Taliban's in charge of the whole country. Back then, they didn't control the North. And just look at all the weapons and equipment they've been able to seize as well. And they can claim that they drove America out of Afghanistan in a chaotic, disorganized withdrawal. Yeah, Al-Qaeda's got their party hats on, and they're going to report to Kabul for training. Uh, Senator Tom Cotton, thank you. Thank you.